Okay, g'day all and welcome to another video. So, uh, I'm not uh, able to use my green screen at the moment. You might notice behind us there, that's the, um, that's the, uh, that's the beach. So, uh, welcome to the East Coast all. And uh, I'll be in a van for a little while. Uh, so down below, I'm going to put uh, links to my Patreon, my website, Cheers As Talk, and uh, also my Facebook. Okay, so the topic of today's video is really conditions. And uh, we're going to start with the conditional jumps but we're also going to add the conditional moves and the conditional bite set instructions. So these are a bunch of different instructions, but they're all related because they use the same condition codes. And these instructions are really how we act on the flags register. So last time we were talking about the flags register and setting different bits in it, your sign bit and your overflow bit and that sort of thing. But these conditional instructions are what we use to actually act. Uh, on the values in that register. Okay, so first of all, we're going to be talking about conditional jumps. Uh, you'll see it notated often in the in the um, text as like JCC uh, as opposed to JMP. So JMP is an unconditional jump. JCC is just a general uh, abbreviation for all of the conditional jumps. So the CC is replaced by the condition codes, which we'll see in just a minute. Okay, so the idea is that we supply one uh, operand, uh, usually a label. So we'll just say my label, for example. And then um, if the condition specified by the CC is true, then the jump will be taken. The instruction pointer will take the jump to the label. Otherwise, the instruction pointer will just fall down below the jump and uh, continue ex executing as normal. So in practice, we supply a label, but what's actually happening is called RIP relative addressing. Uh, interestingly enough, the CPU or the assembler will program in a signed number uh, whenever we use a label and it's say negative five would mean jump the IP back five bytes or positive 10 would mean jump the IP forwards 10 bytes. Yeah, this is called RIP relative addressing or uh, addressing from the uh, instruction pointer. Yeah, but we don't usually care about that. We usually just um, supply a label or the other one of the other two instructions that we want to look at is called the conditional moves. So we're, re we're familiar with the MOV instruction, just copies data from one place to another. The conditional moves are a little bit different. So once again, we've got these little CC thing happening, um, CMOV, CC, and the CC becomes whatever condition we're checking. Uh, if the condition is true, um, then the value of the second operand will be moved into the first. And if the condition is false, then the first operand won't be changed. Yeah, it's as simple as that, really. Uh, it's interesting, but there's no 8-bit versions of these instructions. I tell you what, it's also, it's very irritating, but there's no version that takes an immediate operand. It would be so nice to have sometimes if you could do a conditional move where the second operand is uh, an immediate. Yeah, but you can't. So the, the only options that we really have are 16, 32, and 64-bit registers, and the second operand can be memory. Yeah, but that's conditional moves, so nothing much to them. If the condition is true, then the value is moved from the second operand into the first. Otherwise, the first operand is not changed. And finally, the other instruction that uses these CC little condition codes is called set byte, or the conditionally set byte, I think. I don't know if there's any standard name for these instructions, but uh, set byte conditional or something like that. So the objective here, we supply only one uh, operand. It can be a register or memory. Uh, it's only eight bits, so we're setting a byte here. A byte is eight bits. Uh, but if the condition is true, then the value one will be moved into the register or memory. Uh, if the condition is false, then the value zero will be moved. So this is for uh, languages where one means true and zero means false. Yeah, pretty easy, really. Okay, and here are the condition codes. All of them, I think. Uh, yeah, so I I've supplied the, the uh, J there. Uh, that little J just there is actually the jump. Yeah, so if you're using CMOV, then instead of J-O, you would use CMOV O. Or for the set bytes, you would say set O or CMOV N-O or whatever. Uh, something that you might notice about this little list just here is that there's a whole heap of slashes in some of these places. So this, this, this instruction just here, not carry. There's lots of different ways to specify the same instruction, so I've just grouped those together. So, yeah, JNB, jump not below, is exactly the same instruction as JNC, and it's exactly the same as instruction as jump above or equal. Uh, lots of different ways to specify the same uh, machine code. I tried, I tried to color code these a little bit. Um, so we've basically got signed and unsigned. Unsigned conditions tend to use uh, above and below, whereas the signed conditions use greater than and less than. It's just something that you have to get used to, but um, purple here is unsigned and red is generally signed. I mean, generally, you can use, you know, the flags for whatever you want, but generally speaking. 
Uh, here we go. So we've just got a little demonstration here. So, so what I might do first of all is just uh, demonstrate um, a conditional jump, I guess. Uh, so the first conditional jump we've got is uh, J-O or overflow. So if you want to see if there's an overflow, what would be a good example of an overflow? Um, I guess something like uh, MOV EAX um, negative 9 or something and maybe add EAX um, negative 12. I don't know if that's going to overflow or not. Well, there's one way to find out. So, uh, okay, so I'll make a label. A label is just a, a, a name with, uh, with a colon and I'll call it overflowed and uh, I'll make another label down the bottom and we'll say didn't overflow okay and right here we might say mov rex 12 or whatever and down here mov rex and 15 okay so our objective here is really just to demonstrate a conditional jump so I'll say in here jo uh, overflowed JNO didn't overflow. Okay, so if this operation just here, this add EAX and negative 12, uh, if that causes the overflow flag to be set to 1, then because of this JO, jump on overflow, um, the IP will jump down here to overflowed. Uh, if it didn't set the overflow flag, or if the overflow flag was set to 0, then uh, JNO, jump not overflow, will jump down to yeah. Yeah, so let's have a bit of a go and we'll run this code and see which it does. I haven't thought too much about this. I don't know if it's going to jump or not. Oh, I don't think it will. No, it's just going to store a value in there. Negative 21. Okay, here we go. Now, I've got to push FN and the function key for some reason. I don't know why. Do you know what we should do? You know what I should have done if I was organized about this? Uh, I'd have opened this up already. So let's get our uh, registers window going. Here we go. Hold on a second. Here we go. Here we go. There we go. Okay, so the uh, the overflow flag, where are we? Uh, OV is set to zero. Okay, so it didn't overflow. That's good. Um, let's step through. All right, so it didn't take the jump overflow because the OV, the overflow flag, is set to uh, zero. But JNO, uh, it did take. Yeah, so JNO means if the overflow is zero, then take the jump. Yeah, so that's what happened just there. All right, so moving on to the next flag or the next condition. Uh, okay, so the next condition I've got written down is uh, the carry flag. Uh, so what we might do for carry, we'll demonstrate the um, conditional move. Yeah, so we'll switch things up a little bit and we'll go through some uh, conditional jumps, some conditional moves and um, the set byte instructions as well. Okay, so for the, for the conditional move to work, you have to have the value that you're moving in some other register. So what I might do, first of all, is uh, just push RBX. Um, you're not supposed to change RBX, so if you are gonna change it into your function, then you have to push it and pop it at the end. Yeah, it's what's called not scratch. Um, what the? Just grab that X and put him down in the middle of nowhere, why don't you? Uh, okay, so the value that I might put is uh, maybe uh, mov ebx uh, 67, we'll just say, as an example. Uh, mov eax, um, actually, um, mm, negative 1, uh, add eax and 1. Uh, okay, so that code just there, we, we moved 67 into uh, ebx for no particular reason, but here is the cmov, so cmov c. Um, e A X E B X. Okay, so what this instruction is saying is uh, if the carry flag is set from this previous little add just here, and it will be, um, then we want to move whatever this is into E A X. Otherwise, E A X should remain unchanged. So if we just run this, what we should get is uh, 67 in E A X. Let's have a bit of a run. Okay, let's see. How are we going? So push R B X. That's good. R B X is pushed. Uh, okay, so after that add instruction just there, if we come to the carry flag, CY, we'll see that it's set to 1. Okay, so CMOV, or conditional move if the carry flag is set, should uh, move 67, or 43 in hexadecimal, into EAX. And there, there we go, it did. Okay, so the other thing that can happen is uh, instead of... Uh, instead of having the overflow flag set, maybe, maybe we didn't cause an overflow, so we might have had something like... Um, 100 in uh, EAX. So EAX is not going to overflow when we add 1 to 100, it's just going to store 101. So in this case, what we should get if we run 
uh, the conditional move will not move um, the value of uh, RBX or EBX into EAX. Okay, so after, after executing the add instruction, we see that the carry flag is set to zero, and if we do the seam of, you'll see that 65 is still stored in uh, EAX. Or in other words, the conditional move did not uh, move 67 into EAX. Yeah, so that's a conditional move. Uh, okay, so something that I wanted to point out with the conditional moves is just the fact that it will zero the top 32 bits of a 64-bit operand. Okay, so for the next example, I just made a complete mess of it. So what I might do is, uh, is just start again. Uh, I completely forgot that there's an easy way to set the carry flag. Um, if we mov uh, RAX and negative 1, that's 1's across the entirety of RAX. And if we uh, CLC or clear the carry flag, the carry flag will be zero at that point. So when we come down here to the conditional move, it shouldn't change EAX. I mean, it shouldn't move the 67 into EAX. And it won't. Uh, it'll keep the EAX exactly the same, but what it will do is clear the top 32 bits of RAX. Uh, okay, so at that point, uh, at the point of the conditional move, at the moment we've got negative one or, or ones across the entirety of uh, RAX. All 64 bits are set to one. So the CMOV shouldn't do anything, but uh, if we run that CMOV there, we see that it didn't move uh, the EBX, uh, but it did clear the top. Yeah, something to be careful of. It pretty much happens with all of the 64-bit um, uh, registers whenever we perform 32-bit uh, operation. Okay, so the zero flag is next. Now, I, for the zero flag, I think what we should do is just point out something really, really common. So uh, this, is, this is how you make a loop in, uh, in assembly. We do something like MOV REX 89 or whatever. Actually, I might make it something else. We'll make it 10. Loop head, uh, deek rex, and a j and z. Uh, I think it's so common to use a zero flag like this that we might uh, we might specify this rex. Sorry, that should be um, rcx. There we go. Uh, okay, so to make a loop, you put the value that you want to count to. They should both be rcx. Have I just been? There we go. So to make a loop, you put the number of iterations that you want in some register, uh, often RCX. It was originally called RCX, I think, because it was the counter. Uh, actually, I don't know if that's true, since RAX, RBX, RCX, RDX, there's obviously a pattern there. Uh, but you put the number of iterations that you want into, say, RCX, and then you put your loop head, or the top of your loop. And in here, we've got the body of our loop. So whatever we want to do. And uh, at the bottom of that, a very, very common ending is deek RCX or whatever counter you're using, and then jump not zero to loop head. So the moment that RCX reaches zero will be however many iterations we've put in here, like uh, 10 in this instance. And uh, at that point, the jump not zero would not work. Yeah, so this is going to execute 10 times. Uh, I don't think we need to run through that to show, but a very, very common way to do a loop. Okay, so something else I should mention about the zero flag is it's also the equals flag. Yeah, so if we say something like, um, well, often we use compare with these uh, conditional instructions. So if we've got something like, uh, I don't know, mov EAX 10 and uh, mov ECX 5, uh, comp EAX ECX, and well, let's do like set B, AL, set B. Uh, what were we looking at? E. Okay, so set equals AL. So what's going to happen just here? This is uh, an example of the set byte instruction. So we've moved 10 into EAX, we've moved 5 into ECX, and then we compare the two, which just sets up the flags. And set E means set uh, equal. Yeah, so it's going to set AL to 1 if the values that we compared were equal, and it's going to set it to 0 if they were not. So in this example, 10 is obviously not equal to 5. Uh, you might have learned. So what we should get is uh, a zero in AL. Let's have a bit of a look. This is an example of uh, the equals flag, or the zero flag being used to check uh, equality. Uh, okay, so after the compare instruction, we've got some... Um, where is it? The zero flag. Where is he? Uh, over here. ZR. It's zero at the moment. So if we run the next uh, little instruction, uh, AL, which is the lowest two hex digits of RAX, is set to zero. Uh, okay, so the other thing that we might have uh, is we might have uh, two operands that are equal. And uh, maybe we're not setting AL because that's a little bit, little bit confusing. Let's set uh, BH, the high byte of BX. <laughs> uh, let's set these two to equal just for the demonstration. 
Okay, so equality and the zero flag are the same thing. If two things are equal, then the zero flag is going to be set. If they're not, then the zero flag will be cleared. Uh, but what we should have here is... Um, okay, so after the comparison, EAX and ECX both had five, which is equal. Five is equal to five, always learned. Uh, so the zero flag is set just there, or the equals flag, you might want to call it. So set equals, if we run through the next line, should set uh, BH to one. And it did. There we go. Yeah, the high bytes, or the, what would you say, third and fourth uh, hex digits of RBX. Um, the opposite to set equals is set NE, or set not equals. So if the two weren't equal, then, uh, you know, you'd get the opposite effect to what we just had. Uh, BH would be set to zero in, uh, in this particular example, because um, five is equal to five. So equals is exactly the same as Z, set Z, set E, and... Uh, Set NZ or set not zero flag is exactly the same as set not equals. Yeah, same instructions. Okay, so the next ones that we're going to have a look at are below and uh, and above, I think. So below and above are used for unsigned data. Uh, but what's important to keep in mind is that uh, you're checking is the first operand below or above the second. Yeah, so if we've got something like uh, MOV RAX 78 and MOV RBX. 90 for example, uh, comp rex rbx, and down here we might say uh, jb um, was below and ja was above. Was below, was above. Okay, and we'll just put something in here, ret, I guess. Uh, ret. Whoops, real 10, scroll down. <laughs> IntelliSense going nuts. Hey, I shouldn't ret like that. Look at this, we got to pop RBX. Yeah, you got to pop RBX before you ret, otherwise you'll get into trouble from Bill Gates. There we go, sir. It's popped. Okay, but what we're demonstrating here is, um, what are we demonstrating? Uh, is, is 78 uh, above or below 90? This is good assembly program let's have a <laughs> let's have a play and see what we get uh comp rax was below uh, it should be below 78 is below 90 i was taught at school my teacher said it 78 is below 90 creel i didn't believe a bar of it until i saw this so at the moment we've got um yeah there we go was below yeah jump to was below so uh yeah it compares the first operand to the second yeah, so if we switch these around a little bit, and note also that these are uh, below and above are for unsigned. Not a great deal of differentiation between signed and unsigned in assembly. You kind of just make it up as you go. 780 is above 90. I kid you not. Look it up. Look it up in Wikipedia. Okay, so after the comparison, so 780, this, this comparison just here will set up the flags, and then when we check uh, above or below, we should get uh, above. Yeah, there you go. So it didn't take the JB jump. Uh, instead, it'll take the was above jump because the first operand was above the second. Yeah, so this is a really, really common pattern when you're dealing with these conditional jumps is to do a comparison first, comp, to set up the flags the way that you want and then to act on whatever they have, jump belows or jump aboves or greater and less than. Yeah, that sort of thing. Well, the next code that we might look at is the, the sign code. And we'll put our bit of our little thing here, pop this little fella. Good on you, mate. Pop back out again. Uh, okay, so for the sign, we might just uh, mov rbx 100, for example. And we might go like uh, mov uh, ax 50 to mov rcx. Okay, so we move 90 into rcx. Then if we sub rax and uh, rcx... Okay, so this is just an example here that you don't actually have to use the comp instruction. So a lot of instructions, sub, add, yeah, they set up the flags in various different ways. Now, if we do this little sub just here, then we should have our flags set up to, uh, to CMOV, sign, RAX, RBX. Yeah, okay, so what, so what we're saying just here is if the answer to this instruction just here, which is the last instruction that set the flags, we're saying if that was a negative number or if the sign flag in the flags register is set, uh, with this CMOV we're saying that we want to move the value of RBX, which is 100, into RAX. So in this particular example, if you subtract um, 90 from 50, then you will actually get a negative number around about negative 40. 
What's this? Edits cannot be... Edits cannot be. <laughs> well, what about we hit stop and then edits can be? Yes. Yeah, edits can be. All right, so we'll just uh, run through this, run through this, run through this. Okay, so seam of S. Um, move 100 into RAX if... Uh, the sign flag is set. Well, there you go. The sign flag was set because 50 minus 90 is a negative number. Um, all right, so that's a little bit about the sign flag. You could do seam of NS if you wanted. That would move um, the value 100 into RAX or move the value from uh, RBX into this first operand here if the sign flag is not set. Yeah, so in our instance, that wouldn't do anything. Uh, there's also parity, but I don't really want to talk about parity because it's not particularly useful. But you can uh, you can do these CMOVs and things with the parity as well. You'll just go like set B and PO for parity odd if you want. A bit of that sort of business. Set PO. Or we could do like um, set PE. Set PE. Set PE. Yeah, so you can set for parity odd and even if you want. You can also just do set P for set if the parity is... Uh, true or if the parity flag is set or set NP okay so moving on we've got uh, a bunch of uh, a bunch of signed uh, conditions check the, the the slide at the start of the um, little presentation actually listed all of the codes if I forget any just refer to that um, okay so we want to talk about JG and JL so greater and less than are for signed data so if we've got something like um, mov EAX and negative 9 uh, mov ECX 100 um, set G BL. Okay, so right here we're saying um, nothing at all. Uh, mov, sorry, mov doesn't change um, any flags at all, so we better do a comp first. Whoa. Whoa. It's excited about EAX. EAX! Okay, ECX as well. Alright, what have we got here? I've got to have a bit of a look at this. I don't even know what I'm typing. It's hard to see. Wind you better, why don't you? Um, we've got negative 9 in EAX. We've got uh, 100 in ECX. And then we're setting uh, if it's greater. So EAX is not greater than 100. So BL should be 0 at the end of this. Uh, I've confused myself a fair bit though. So I don't really know what's going to happen. Let's hit a bit of a run and then we'll just F10 down and ask the computer what to do. He generally knows. All right, so BL at this point is zero, and it didn't change. Uh, it didn't change because negative nine is not greater than 100. So if we switch this and we say L, uh, negative nine, after this comparison here, uh, it'll set up the flags to show that negative nine is less uh, than 100. Yeah, so in, at this point, we should get BL set to one. Uh, there you go, look at that, one in BL. Okay, so we've also got L or E, less or equal. Yeah, so if we change this back to here, so so this will uh, this will set um, BL to one if EAX uh, is less or equal to ECX in this example. So I think that's about it. It's it's an interesting read to exactly what these flags actually check. So something like um, JL actually checks if the sign flag is not equal to the overflow flag. Yeah, it's a little bit strange sometimes, the things that they check. I think that's pretty much all of the flags. Let's just get them back up here. So if I missed any of these, um, hopefully they're sort of vaguely self-explanatory from what we've been through. Uh, but really, really interesting instructions. Just a whole bunch of instructions with these different condition codes. So we've got the conditional jumps, the conditional moves, and the set byte instructions. And here's the condition codes. Pretty, uh, pretty simple stuff. Just a lot of uh, different options with these instructions. Uh, anyway, I just want to say uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope this video on the beach has worked out, and uh, I hope you have a really good day. Uh, links down below for Patreon, Facebook, uh, websites, the apps that I've used, and all of that sort of stuff. Leave a comment if you want, uh, or a thumbs up, a thumbs down. It's all good. I uh, just want to say thank you very much for watching, and uh, have a good one.